Hello and what's up peeps, this is the Geek God is back again with another video and on this tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you my technique of painting mountains, simplified for beginners. I'm going to be starting out with the basics of how a little child draws mountains with simple shapes and I'm going to break it down further, adding details step by step until we get the final result and then I'm going to take it to the next level by changing the entire mood and lighting to give a more dramatic effect. So make sure to watch this video till the end to understand the full process so that you too can create this. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a new canvas and I'm gonna fill the background with a gray color because I find white to be too bright on the eyes. Next, I'm gonna try to draw mountains the way little kids draw them. I'm gonna start with a basic horizon line and then I'm gonna draw very simple triangles just like a kid would draw, just simple triangles and then maybe some clouds in the sky and then a sun and finally maybe a river and the sun's reflection and absolutely no reflection of the mountains whatsoever. So that's how a kid would normally draw mountains. So I'm going to focus on this exact same thing and I'm going to pick up the area of the mountain. I'm going to try to break it down step by step starting with simple shapes that is an arrangement of flat triangular shapes and then I'm going to roughly break them down into 3D shapes to add better volume now taking that as a reference i'm gonna start finally drawing the mountain i'm gonna do a rough sketch of the basic silhouette or the outline of the whole mountain and once i'm happy with the shape i'm gonna start selecting the entire shape with lasso tool i'm gonna do it with one pixel feather so that the edges don't look too sharp like a flat cutout once that's done i can delete the sketch layer and then i'm gonna add some colors to the background sky i'm gonna go with a very bright pink to give like a late afternoon lighting that comes just before dusk or sunset time and a bit of warm gradient from below and then i'm gonna take a new layer on top of the mountain's flat base layer i'm gonna set it to clipping mask on top of the base layer what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna select a textured brush you can find the link to this brush set that i use in the description can download it and use the same brush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the brush and rotate it slightly so that I can get that nice flat angle. I can make nice use of the sharp edges. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decide where the light is going to hit the mountain. So let's say the sun is on the right side and the light is going to be coming in and hitting the mountain and it's going to be lighting up the right side of the mountain. If you can imagine these mountains to be 3D pyramids, then of course the light is going to hit the right side of these pyramids. Now I'm going to go back and choose the brush that I just customized and then I'm going to pick the same base color of the mountain and then choose a brighter version of it. And now I'm going to paint some random zigzag shapes on the right side of these mountains. I'm trying to break down the shape into different forms. It's not going to be a huge singular lump of colors. It's going to be a variation of large shapes and small shapes and all in a zigzag pattern. Notice how I'm avoiding very curved circular shapes. They're all very pointy and zigzag. And notice that the color I picked is more or less on the desaturated grayer side of the palette so that I don't add too much colors and saturation to this. So this is overall my entire lit up surface of the mountain. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick an even brighter tone of this same color and then I'm gonna take a new layer and I'm gonna paint some more highlights on the very top to give the sense of a bit of a gradient that the light is hitting the top of the mountain. Notice how a 3D form has already been carved out just with the help of three colors, the base color, the main highlight color, and a bit of a brighter highlight at the very top. I'm gonna switch it on and off to show you the difference. As you can see, what difference a bit of a variation in color can make. Now I'm gonna choose an even brighter version of that color and I'm gonna draw some more highlights at the very top of all of these tips. Notice that I'm painting only the tips and I decided to add a bit of a pink tone to it and I can try some other variation of the color from hue saturation to check if there are other colors that might look better. So I'm gonna stick with this one and then I'm gonna pick an even brighter, like almost white color. And I'm gonna pick the tip of the highest mountain to give it some importance that yeah, it is taller than all the other surrounding mountains. It's gonna be 
our subject, our, our focal point, our area of attention. So I'm adding this highlight to the tip of the highest mountain. What I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna paint some soft edges. Right now when I drew all the zigzag shapes, you can see all the shapes are pretty sharp. So now I'm gonna add some variation to the shapes by adding some softness. So I'm gonna take a new layer and I'm gonna decrease the opacity of my brush to around 40% and I'm gonna pick that base tone of the highlight that I drew at the very beginning and I'm gonna paint it to give it that subtle softness around the edges. So there's a nice variation of hard and soft edges to give it that realistic volume. Now I'm gonna make all the sharp edges soft. I'm gonna maintain a nice balance of hard edges and soft edges. I'm gonna switch the layer on and off to show you the difference that it makes. I'm gonna try some other variations on that by using some color adjustments to see if I can add a bit more of color vibrance to the whole scene. Just adding a little bit more of a reddish tone to it to give it some more variation. What I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna pick the color of the sky and I'm gonna choose a darker tone of it and then I'm gonna draw some bounce light on the darker part of the mountain that is the shadow part it's gonna have some bounce light some environmental ambient light falling on it and notice how I'm also making it brighter towards the tip just like on the other side receiving direct light from the Sun to sort of strengthen that tip a bit better I'm gonna switch it on and off to show you the difference and I'm gonna try some other color options I'm gonna make it a bit more pinkish so that it fits better with the sort of color I use for the background sky. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some finer details. So I'm gonna pick the shadow color and I'm gonna draw some fine shapes, some lines and some bit of a texture you can say. Some more sharpness in areas that looked kind of muddy. Again to add variation in shapes. If you consider the zigzag, the shadow in the zigzags to be cracks, then I'm adding some variation in the thickness of cracks in the rocks of this mountain. I'm gonna decrease the opacity a bit and now you can see the difference. What I'm gonna do finally at the very end is I'm gonna use a bit of a gradient from the bottom. So I'm gonna pick a darker color. I'm gonna using a soft round brush with low opacity. I'm gonna draw some dark shade at the very bottom. So there's a nice gradient. I'm gonna set it to overlay blending mode. I'm gonna decrease opacity so that there's a bit of a vignette effect that pulls your attention towards the tip of the mountain and not towards the base. What I'm doing now is I'm erasing some portions of the layer that are facing the lit up side of the mountain so that there's a bit of a variation. So there we have it. There's our mountain. And it can be achieved in a very simple way in just a few layers. What I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna take the whole thing to a new level. So I'm gonna increase the overall contrast of the whole image by taking a level adjustment layer. So what it does is it not only increases the contrast but it makes the scene a bit darker. Now I'm gonna make the background sky a bit more high contrast and dark so that it resembles more of a sunset kind of a dusk time. What I'm doing now is I'm taking a new layer in Clipping Mask right on top of the mountain and I'm gonna choose a bit of a bright orange or reddish color and in overlay blending mode I'm gonna paint that color on the very tip of the mountain all of the tips then I'm gonna pick a bright yellow color and then I'm gonna paint it on the absolute highest tips the highest points on these tips so there's a nice gradient of yellow and orange gradually transitioning to the bluish tone of the mountain I'm gonna erase the portion that is, that is leaking over to the shadowy area. As you can see the difference. I'm painting some more highlight on top in soft light mode, decreasing the opacity until I feel this right. What I'm doing now is I'm taking a cloud brush which you can again find in the brush set. The link is in the description. I'm gonna give it a notion of wind, like wind is blowing and it's blowing the snow right off of the tip of the mountain. So I'm gonna give this sense of motion and dynamic nature to the whole painting. So I'm picking the brighter tones and I'm drawing this motion blur kind of effect towards the left. As if the wind is carrying all the snow towards the left side along the direction of the wind. And I'm gonna erase portions of it with soft round brush. And I'm gonna decrease the opacity a bit and finally I'm gonna apply some color lookups to try other options of colors. I'm gonna adjust the levels a bit. Finally I'm gonna apply some chromatic aberration. It's an easy two second step. And finally I'm gonna add some noise. And once that's done I'm gonna do some final color adjustments from color balance to get that nice colorful dusk time dramatic effect. So that was it guys. That was my technique of painting mountains. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Make sure to check out my other videos and subscribe and click on the bell icon to check out my future videos. 
you have any questions or feedback, make sure to leave a comment. So until next time, peace.